welcome to Before the Bid, your connection to some of the world's best livestock sales. Stay tuned as your host, Andy Howe, takes you coast to coast, stopping along the way to talk with producers about their operation, their livestock, and of course, their upcoming sales. Let's get to it. Welcome, livestock friends, to this Before the Bid podcast. And on this one, we have multiple people, and we are in multiple locations here for this one. Both of them related to me are up in northern Indiana. One of them is in one of my favorite places in Indiana, and the other one's across the state. We have return guests again from this one. They had a sale last spring, and they are going to have a fall sale this year. And so they decided that last year they wanted to have a podcast and they enjoyed that so much, which we really appreciate. And so they decided they were going to do another one here for this fall. And we are going up to Laoto, Indiana is where the cattle are. And also we're going to be in West Lafayette up there at Purdue University for this one. And on this one, we have the Knott family from Knott's Landing. We have Rob, Rebecca, and Callie Knott on the line here. I want to welcome you guys back to the podcast. And man, we had so much fun last year and uh, really looking forward to this one as well. Thank you. Guys, we got Callie on. And again, Callie is at Purdue. Callie is in her second year of vet school. So you've just about taken residency up there at uh, West Lafayette, haven't you, Callie? Yeah, been here for six years and uh, getting ready for two more to make it a full eight years to get that DVM degree. Right, going to come out with a veterinary degree. And do you know where you're going to go with that yet? Do you know what you're going to do or or are you going to specialize in anything? Um, so I've actually been, I've been trying to get my feet wet in different places. Um, a lot of people think that we're veterinarians just have, you know, small and large animal, but there's a lot of different avenues you could go. And I kind of figured that out with, I worked with the Board of Animal Health for the state of Indiana one summer and uh, with Dr. Lamb up north. And I've also been to, you know, a research facility where there's veterinarians. I have a lot of fun in the embryology and the theriogenology aspect, especially this summer where I got to work with our own embryologist, uh, Dr. James up north, and as well as the one and only Dr. Horseman. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, that's been on my radar is more into the um, IVF and the flushing aspect and doing that sort of specialization. But um, I have been looking into um, government and the Board of Animal Health as well as some industry aspects as well. So maybe not going out to farms and operations to do that kind of work, but, but more, I don't know if you want to call it maybe an office type of a situation. Yeah, I really would like to deal more with um, producers and herd health. Okay. I mean, I do plan on probably as soon as I get out of school, I'll probably go work out of practice and get some hands-on experience. Okay. They do say that you learn the most your first couple of years after vet school and um, in a clinic setting. And right. so I, uh, I probably will do that for a few years, but I like to look more into uh, specializing in embryology and right. flushing right. and even looking years to come at some industry jobs working, maybe not at a desk, but maybe just working more out on the farm and herd health okay. uh, with producers. Okay. Okay. Now, embryology and, and that sort of thing in large ruminants, small ruminants? More into large ruminants, so okay. more uh, bovine, uh, beef right. or dairy. Right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, good. I didn't know if you were going to switch gears on us and and go with some of those smaller rooms. I mean, well I'm not going to say no to new experiences, right. but beef is where it's at for me. I like it. I like it. <laughs> Good deal. And I didn't expect much different, I guess. It just, you know, there's all the different avenues that you can take with that degree. You just open things up. Oh, yeah. You guys going to get Purdue football going on up there? <laughs> oh, man, I hope so. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Purdue basketball. That's what I'm here for. Okay, okay. Well, that'll work too. I got Rob and Becky on, of course, and Rob, we talked about how Callie is in her sixth year of school, and you know, you're almost to celebrate 10 years until you're done, right? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Hopefully, she can carry me home. Well, maybe she can learn enough health things up there that uh, she can take care of you here in a couple of years when, <laughs> when you're old and retired, right? Amen. <laughs> 
<laughs> Becky does a, a large amount with the auxiliary in the Angus Association and uh, in the Indiana Angus Association. And Rob, we'll get back with you uh, on the association stuff as well, too. But we'll go with ladies first. And Becky, tell us a little bit about some of the auxiliary things that you are involved with. And you guys have a major thing coming up here in very shortly. We do. And I'll be honest with you, I know Rob and I have both tried to get involved in the association because we talked about this earlier, that association, the livestock industry, 4-H, Angus, has given opportunities not only to us as we were growing up, but definitely to our kids as well and, and hopefully into our grandsons. So yes, I got involved with the Indiana Angus Auxiliary. And then I've been fortunate enough to be working on my third year here at the American Angus Auxiliary. And a few years ago, when the pandemic started, I visited CAB with the American Angus Auxiliary. And we had a nice event there right before everything kind of got closed down. And I left that place thinking, why am I not utilizing this more? as a regional director here in the Midwest. It's so close. So luckily we have partnered with CAB and on October 14th, we have invited the people from our region, whether you're uh, male, female, junior, to come and the ultimate beef experience. CAB will be taking care of that and they will be walking into the meat lab. We'll be mixing up some spreads for cooking. We'll be working on how to talk to consumers about what we do as producers. So looking forward to that. And and last time I heard, we are close to 30 attendees to that. And what was very interesting and I'm very excited about is we have some families coming and also just some consumers that work out in the industry, not necessarily as a producer. So I think we're going to have a nice mix of people there to just help educate and work together to support beef. And I'm super excited about that. On the other avenue here, specifically in Indiana, I have been able to take over as president for this coming year. So my team, I have Drew Dorsler on there and I have Courtney Cates and Marlene Ducart. And we are working, trying to get, well, I guess kind of a triangle of the auxiliary and the association and the juniors all doing things together. So we've uh, hosted a few things. We had some popsicles at junior nationals, donuts and We did some stuff at the preview show and and look forward to doing some of those things to help the different associations here in Indiana bond together and work together for the same thing. So looking forward to both of those things. And again, uh, just appreciative of what all of that has done for us growing up and then our kids growing up. Right. And and doing a very nice job of that. Uh, You know, you you folks didn't have any cattle out of junior nationals or anything like that. And I saw you guys out there for a couple days and and spending time, spending time with the juniors and and the auxiliary things that went on. And so just really thank you guys for what you did uh, for that and, and getting the juniors involved. Yeah. And we enjoy that. Yes. And, and really enjoy doing that. Right. And as you said, Callie came through as a junior. And, and so that's one of the things that, that you guys kind of want to do is, is to help other juniors have the opportunities that she's had. We do. We do. And we talked, I think, at our last podcast, but this is our second one. And so we've been trying to reach out and bring other people in and help them kind of like other people helped us. And that's kind of what this whole sale is about. And I'll just start off. We have uh, several people to thank, but first of all, Andy, thank you and your team. The last podcast we did, we had lots of people make comments and how they enjoyed learning about our cattle and and where we came from. So we really appreciate what you do. And I joked with you just a little bit before I listened to you and Joe Horston last night, and I've been uh, worrying all day how I'm going to be as um, exciting as Joe, but uh, (laughs) I compete with that. (laughs) Yeah, that's so, uh, that's tough to uh, tough to keep up with. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. And the ironic <laughs> thing, and I think Kelly already hit on that, and maybe talk a little bit more in a minute. But this summer, Joe and I talked. I know he mentioned that Doc was still teaching, even though he was retired. And right. fortunately, he was teaching my daughter this past summer. So 
very grateful and it's very ironic because Joe and I tease. He always says my dad taught him a lot. And I said, Joe, you know what? I'm very appreciative that your dad's teaching my daughter. So right. it's funny how this whole Angus family and livestock industry goes kind of a full circle. So very appreciative of those friendships as well. Definitely want to thank Jeremy at Angus Live and, and Jenny, man. They are always willing to help us get what we need going on that site so people can see our um, cattle from around the country. So very appreciative of that. And of, of course, the Lindsay Hanowitz, you know, I can't say enough about her skills as a professional photographer, videographer. She does an excellent job. And what I like about it is she'll keep going until she, it's what she wants it to be. So right. we really appreciate her and definitely our family and friends that have helped us. And like you said, Kelly's in West Lafayette and it's very interesting how the roles have changed. And I said to Rob the other night, I said, what are we going to do in a couple of weeks? You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going to have to figure something else out, but really appreciative of our family that has helped with this. So, so let's get on to the, the sale, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about our first sale was about Cowley's investment in an adventurous cow from the Summers Dietzman family and how that investment had helped her with her bred gnomes and very competitive in the show ring and in production for sure. And then we're gonna uh, have this sale and after the purchase of that and we continue to show our bred known animals and do well with, we were fortunate enough to be able to work with some amazing families, Angus breeders from around different areas here. So Kelly's gonna highlight that a little bit later, but we are very thankful for them and then just kind of give a shout out to everybody that has visited and that's been kind of our goal of hosting this angus live sale is to try to get people here to see what we have to offer and we felt successful after our first sale but mm -hmm. it's been very humbling to have the people go through here that have done that also but we definitely invite anyone to our open house on october 1st and October 2nd, and then definitely view or call if you need to as we get ready for our actual sale on October 4th. So, Andy, again, thank you, and, and then I'll let Callie and Rob and you guys kind of talk about the cattle. Appreciate that very much, Becky, and appreciate all the work that you do and just helping, again, helping all those juniors come in and, and being involved with all of that and, and keeping these guys in line. You know, you guys, I think we're going to hire Becky to do our scheduling for us uh, <laughs> because it was about three weeks ago, I think. She said, hey, can we record on such and such a date? And I said, well, I, you know, I kind of think so, but that's quite a few weeks out for me. I, you know, I'm not sure what's going on tomorrow. And, and I think she said, you know, let's do such and such a time. And then about five minutes later, she says, no, that's not going to work. We need to do such and such a time, which is about 15 <laughs> minutes later. <laughs> yeah, I got a little problem with that. But, and I think after that, I said, I kind of, Rob kind of gets frustrated with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rob, you probably don't ever have to worry if you're going to be somewhere and when you need to be there because she's probably all over it. Oh, yeah very good at doing that so uh, i thought that was a story we just needed to kind of bring out but yeah three <laughs> weeks ago and she she needed to change it for 15 minutes because she'd already had it planned out so uh yeah and we, we had to get it so so we could get callie on here just just so busy up there at vet school and uh i'm sure you spend yeah. a lot of time in the library like i did when i was at purdue uh, <laughs> are, are you are you gonna disagree with me uh, I'm, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so, well, that's great. Well, Becky, before we let you go, really, not that you're going to get off here, but, but tell us just a little about Katie. We've got pictures of the grandsons being around there. And tell us just a little about Katie. Katie started out and she showed her first four years. And then she was also involved in dance. And she decided after her fourth year that she wanted to do that a little more intensely so mm -hmm. she 
went on to move to San Francisco at the age of 16 and trained out there and was out there for about four years. And then she came back and she went to college and became a graphic designer and uh, then got married. And we have two grandsons and we're happy for them. But in January, they moved from about 20 minutes to us to North Carolina, which is about 10 hours from us. So oh, wow. we get to have them back every now and then. And we enjoy that. And this summer was kind of nice, and this kind of is a testament to the cattle, but our lot one, the two-year-old and the four-year-old, uh, Navy and Noble, they worked on her quite a bit because mm -hmm. she is puppy dog tame. Mm -hmm. So that was nice to have them around, and they love to be in the barn and, and love the animals, and they're involved in the Angus Association out in North Carolina. So mm -hmm. Katie's involved in the auxiliary out there and trying to do stuff at the extension to keep them involved. So yeah, so she was just as intense and dedicated to her avenue as Kelly is in the livestock industry. So we're very fortunate to have two very hardworking young ladies that we have raised. Right, right. Now, Katie, did Vera move her out there? You know what? That's interesting. No, her husband took okay. on a job out there. Okay. She actually is now not working for Vera. She's working for another company called Swig. Okay. So they're kind of like Yeti Cups. So it's Swig. Okay. So, yep. Yeah. And she's and lucky enough, she gets to work from home. So she can still be a mom, too. Great. So uh, she's multitasked and having a career and being a mom at the same time. So, yep, they are out there and doing well. We're scheduling a visit actually at <laughs> late in October after the sale's over. So, Rob, what time are you leaving? <laughs> <laughs> right after work. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. I didn't know if, if, if she had that itinerary already for you or not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I think I do, but I say don't put it past her. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. And Rob, you as well still involved heavily with the Indiana Angus and, and running the preview show and, and some of the other things. And you know, I called on you about a few things here later, even after the preview show and some of those things that you're in charge of and, and oversee, I guess we should say. So just appreciate all your help with all of those things as well. Appreciate it. So, yeah, just very involved with the Indiana Angus. So, Rob, do you want to kind of lead us in a little bit to the sale and, and where we can find some information out about this October 4th sale on Angus Live? Well, definitely go online and uh, visit Angus Live. All the lots are posted. Pictures are posted. Videos are posted. I think they look exceptional. And if you have any questions, feel free to give Callie, Rob, or Becky a call. Um, we would love to talk about them with you. Right. Now, Rob, are you in charge of putting all the Facebook posts up? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's our uh, communications director named Rebecca. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> if you're on Facebook, go look those guys up. Knots Landing on Facebook. I did say that right, didn't I? Yeah. Yep. Knots Landing on Facebook. There's something up there at least once a day almost. Yep. Yeah. And I'm sure that, that you guys will continue that from now till the sale time. Yeah, we're paying her well to do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's working out good. That's good. Well, maybe I need to hire her to do that for us as well. So, yeah. Rob, do you want to tell us about where these families came from? Or, or do we want to throw that over to Callie to talk about some of the cows behind these? Yeah, we'll let Callie go ahead and uh, jabber about those. Okay. Well, Callie, do you want to do it as we go through them? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, if you're just listening to this and you're not watching a podcast video, uh, either on uh, our Facebook or the YouTube or even on Walton Webcasting, you can go to Angus Live. You can go down to the Knots Landing and their sale is posted, videos, everything, all that information is there and you can follow along. And I'm going to follow along with them and watch these videos as, as Callie kind of tells us about them. And man, they started out last spring with their first sale and they were really high quality. But man, I don't think that was as high quality as what these lots are for this one. Do you agree, Callie? I do agree. I, uh, I'm really excited about this set that we have. I think each lot holds their own and brings their own to the table. So 
we have a lot of different options for a lot of people that are looking for something. And so I pride in, and I'm appreciative of being able to show some of the cows that these lots are out of uh, for some of the breeders. And I just really enjoyed that time working with breeders and being able to have those experiences. And I'm really appreciative for them allowing us to get some of those genetics and uh, see what we can do with them here at Knox Landing. Right. And one of the ways, uh, we didn't mention this earlier, but one of the ways that you might have met some of the people that you've met is this thing called Miss American Angus, correct? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I am very thankful. I started out in 4-H at the Allen County, being on the beef committee and being a 10-year 4-H member. And then from there, I decided to get into the uh, Indiana Angus Association and as well as the Indiana Charlotte Junior Association. Being able to go from there and go to the national, and, and I really enjoyed the competition and the actual competition of the Miss American Angus. It's definitely a process, and you actually gain a lot of life skills just from that contest alone. So I'm really appreciative and glad I was able to go through and do that contest. But I was very thankful that I was able to serve as the 50th Miss American Angus, and I did meet a lot of people, a lot of breeders, and a lot of juniors and producers, and was able to reconnect and strengthen some of the relationships with the breeders that are highlighted in our sale this year. Right. And speaking of that, the mother of this Lot 1 heifer came from another family that was a former Miss American Angus, right? Yep. Miss Courtney Kate. She was one of the people that kind of pushed me. Her and my mom kind of pushed me to check mark that box of doing the Miss American Angus contest and got a lot of great advice from her when I was going through that contest. And even through showing cattle, Tyler and Courtney have been have become really good friends and I mean we're all good family friends. So I'm really thankful and appreciative that we still have that relationship and connection with them. Right. And we've got two heifers on this sale that are out of cattle from them. And why don't you just go ahead and let's tell us about this lot one. We've got a February female here that's uh, out of a SCC tradition. Yeah, so Law One, she's pretty special. She's out of a cow that is very well known uh, for Cates and has done well for them. SSF Lady Impression 0265, she's a first impression daughter out of the Copper Creek Lady Lou cow. And actually David and Lana Smith own part of this cow, the Lady Impression cow. And David actually showed her her first year and it would have been his last. And I was able to show her for her second year because she was a fall heifer. So I was really thankful and appreciative for Tyler and Courtney as well as Lannis and David to ask me to show this female. And she went on to be the uh, grand champion female at the Atlantic National that year. Mm -hmm. And so just a lot of good memories and moments with that female. And it's really fun to see what she can produce for them and for other families as well. I know Faris had showed one out of her that did successfully well. And Tyler and Courtney have sold quite a few calves out of her and have seen a lot of success. So I'm really excited to see what Lot 1 can do. She's done all the things she needed to do for us. She's grown quite a bit but in the right places as well. So she's definitely a favorite in our eyes, but... She a lot of good memories out of that cow and really thankful that Tyler and Courtney and Lannis and David allowed me to be able to be a part of that cow and her show career. Right. But Dad, I don't know if you have anything else to say about Lot 1. Well, I think the biggest thing for her is she's one that you need to see in person to appreciate. When, when you look at her from the pro, her profile, I mean, it says it all. But then when you get behind that cow, I mean, she just... I think she just blows you away with her spring of rib. Her natural muscling is, is what I really appreciate the most about this one. Mm -hmm. And she sets it all down on a, a nice foot and is flexible and can just get out and go. I think her biggest fault for me is that she's just too tame. <laughs> My, our, our grandkids have just spoiled that thing. And I tell you what, she could get a little tick of meanness. I think uh, she would even wow you more. Oh, wow. Too tame. That You don't hear many guys talk about them being too tame <laughs> and that being a fall. But uh, yeah, that's that's neat. We really do like that one. The moment she hit the ground, you know, it was one that was very special to us. Mm -hmm. And that's something we want to pass on and help. We talked a little bit about 
the Angus Cattle and the Angus Association and given back what it's given to us. And this is one way we can help bring in new families and, and even help the seasoned families too. Right. And especially start a young one on a on a nice calm one and, and tame one like this. Oh, yeah. I can appreciate her on the picture and video and not have to see her in person, I think. Uh, not that I don't want to see her in person, but uh, you said you got to see her in person. But I think if they're not impressed with the picture and the video, I don't know what else to tell them. I agree. I agree. Yeah, this thing is, man, she is really, really cool. Yep. Andy, the nice thing, too, is we've been really trying to work. She's ready to walk in the show ring. Right. We've been trying to get her to do the right things with the show halter and, and all that. So we've had a lot of people look. So hopefully the people that have been here with their picture and video, uh, she's ready to go. Right. That's great. Get them one that's already started. Yeah. Ready to go. I want to chime in here. That's one comment that probably needs to be said. You know, there's cattle that are broke to tie this set. And our cattle period are broke to leave. They set into their sheet. We just take it mm -hmm. a step further. Just take them, like Becky said, they're they're ready to walk in the ring. Right. That's awesome. Ready to go. Turnkey right here. There you you buy one and take them home. And speaking of one that, that everybody wants, especially if we're going to talk about show cattle and things like that, we've got a family here on the lot too. We've got a Sandy here in the lot too, out of Primo. How many of those have done quite well already? The sale we talked about is about all the cows that I showed in my career. And uh, talking about lot two's cow, she's a Sandy 1315 out of style, out of the Cabin Creek Sandy 905 cow. The cow that this lot two is out of, we call her um, Mrs. Potts. Mm -hmm. Just a funny story. I mean, she... Got her name quite well, but we were at a, an open show right near us, I think, in Columbia City. And one of the girls that was helping us, Devin Hayes, we were just standing there with this heifer. And this heifer, her and I had to, you know, build a lot of trust together. And we finally did. But at this show, she just absolutely sneezed like no other. <laughs> and uh, we joke about how she blew her spout. So uh, since then, we just called her Mrs. Potts, and from that day, it's kind of stuck, and we just call her Potts now, but she won the Hoosier Beef Congress that year for me, and it's a kind of a special memory, too, because Jim and Blake Bloomberg judged that year, and that was the year I got to receive that grand champion high five from Mr. Jim Bloomberg. Right. And uh, with that female, so that was, that's a pretty special memory to have, and she went on to win the Purdue AGR as well, and so she's definitely been the purple as well. And this female, she's a May daughter a lot too, but I'm glad we have, you know, different ages here mm -hmm. because the Mays, they change within a couple weeks. The times that I've been home, even the two Mays, they just, they, like I said, they grow and they do all the right things that they're supposed to do, grow in the right places. And so it'll be interesting to see how this one pans out in the future and next summer as well. She sure started out right. Oh, yeah. Yep. Dad, I don't know if you have anything else to say about Lot 2 or your thoughts. Well, I always got some thoughts, so I think... <laughs> I, I like it. Her video speaks for herself. She just has that utmost presence. Here's another one that is balanced from nose to tail, in my opinion. I mean, I always talk about structure and ease of movement. And, and that's one thing that we are very proud of in our cattle period. Mm -hmm. Just the flexibility and the soundness that these cattle possess. And this is one, you, we look at them from the side view all the time. It's, you get behind this one and this one just fills from right out of the top of her shoulder all, all the way back to her tail. It's just exceptional, uh, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Good spring of rib, depth of body, width of chest floor. I'm not partial, but uh, she, we, we really like that one too. <laughs> right. Right. I think I would be a little partial if I had this one. She is really flashy, really nice. And don't hate her because she's young. I'll tell you what, uh, we've had just as much luck with the May cattle that we have shown as any other cattle that we've had. Mm -hmm. This one also, if you go back and you look at her pedigree, she's got a double shot of style in her, if that's something that you appreciate as well. Yep. Even looking at the, the videos and you analyze, she reads growth in her, in my opinion. And like Kelly said, we have two Mays, and then I'll tell you, they have done everything right. Well, that's great. 
pointed out thank yous there. I know I've been thanking the breeders and the families that allowed us to show these animals, but just want to thank Jake and Skylar Cunningham too. We showed Pops and we also showed another female, Cammie, that she was a Luton daughter and we were fortunate just to be able to show these females and see success at the national level too with that Luton daughter as well and with Potts uh, here in the state of Indiana. So just wanted to thank Jake and Skylar and Cunningham again for just allowing us the opportunity to be able to be a part of some quality females and to gain some quality progeny out of them as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and a good place to go find quality livestock. The lot three, let's move in. We've got the May Proven Queen here. Yeah, so... Lot three, this cow is, we all partner with Tyler and Courtney Cates again, and we really like the, the genetics out of this cow. She's a blue chip out of a payday cow, and actually been trying to experiment with kind of part of it when you figure out what you want to breed your cows to, what you think's going to work, and I, I'm really excited to see how well this female is going to grow into the future. She's another May out of Primo. Her picture says it all. She's done all the right things, and she just has a lot of power and muscle to her. She's got bone, and that's kind of what I referred to as, you know, each lot holds their own and brings a lot to the table. But this female, you know, when you look at her picture, but when you get behind her, she's just got so much muscle and so much power to her. So I'm excited to see what this female is going to do um, along with, you know, lot two. They're both maize, but mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what they're going to do next year and next summer. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Rob, she's just a little bit different make from the lot, too. Oh, so it's my turn to, to chime in here a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, this, we'll give you equal time, too. Don't don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to talk about them and to talk about the differences that you like about each one. Right. But this one, if you've ever seen her mother and remember her, she is a spitting image of her mother as far as her substance of bone probably the, the the heaviest bone one that we have for having that much uh, substance of bone and foot length of body length of neck when you watch her on the move she just takes probably the longest step mm -hmm. of any of them mm -hmm. it, it, it is fun to talk about them how they're all different but uh she is one that has really come into her own the more feed we that we put into her it seems like the better she gets yeah, she's, she is different, but she is very high quality in my opinion. And you're right. I like the way she just moves out and she just flows. I mean, it's it's effortless and it's it's attractive and, man, she just she just goes. I'm sure glad you see that too, Andy. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I like cattle that can move. So, yeah, and another one again there from Kate's family on that proven queen dam on that one and you know i was telling you earlier we've done a couple of these podcasts and, and looked at a couple different sales and this angus steer thing is for some reason i'm seeing more this year it seems like than in the past couple years and man there is a really really nice steer going to be offered here from knots landing on october 4th yeah a lot for you i have a, a lot of stories about this deer but uh all i will say is that he is a sweetheart mm -hmm. <laughs> uh skywalker and he stems from fcf proven queen 743 we call her louise in our herd and she's one that i am uh, really excited to see her as a donor cow um and she comes from uh fcf greg and eric mcclure mm -hmm. And I will say that we are very thankful for them and letting us show not only Louise, but also uh, showing Wanda that we had. And they actually have some progeny out of her. She was a blue chip daughter that they owned with David Anderson and Brady Stafford from Canada. But we just want to thank them as well and the FCF crew as they always love to have Rob go and help them at the shows as they call him King Rob. So. Um, I'm sure Dad, he has many stories, and thank them for letting him go to Denver uh, by himself without the girls uh, chaperoning <laughs> him. But, um, uh, yeah, so Lot 4, he's a 24 carat out of a style daughter cow. And like I said, he holds his own. Uh, one thing that we do pride in, and I know we've talked about it, is structure. We, You know, I was always taught to start from the ground and go up. And here with the Angus steer, he is, you know, that's one of the things that I really like about him is he can move and he's sound. But when you get behind him, 
you are very impressed, uh, especially, you know, for Angus deer and going up against, you know, not only being in the Angus breed, but if you take into other shows, uh, open shows, you're up against, you know, other crossbreds and other breeds, but mm -hmm. he holds his own. I will say that. Absolutely. I got two words. <laughs> Meat and muscle. Right. We have been very fortunate in selling some nice Angus steers and steers that have what and uh, have done well, not only in the show ring, but the junior national in the carcass contest. Mm -hmm. The Wicker family has done really well with the steers that we have uh, sold them, as well as a family in Tippecanoe County that has done really well. But uh, no, like I said, they, he is meat and muscle with a whole lot of flash. Yeah, and he blends it all together quite well. He does, and uh, he, he's just one that my brother-in-law, Jack Ward, I think would, would appreciate this deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he is good cattle. He is. And Callie mentioned the McClure family. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just fun. The friends you meet right. doing this thing, and they are sure pretty special to our family. Right. Yeah, and so we mentioned earlier, you know, you guys have been around and, and you guys have cattle in your program and, and offspring in your program from, from some of the top herds in the in the nation, uh, whether they be fairly close to you or not, you still have cattle from some of the top breeders. You bet. Yep. Been very fortunate. I, I tell you, we, it is very humbling when you walk out into pasture and just watch them cows and the offspring from those uh, cattle can or about. Right. Well, and here's the other thing. I mean, these people can, can go out and find cattle from anywhere, and they can find really, really good ones, and they can show them, and they can do some really good things. And if they're not careful with what they're doing, they're not going to produce offspring like you guys have to come back and offer to everybody else. You guys are doing your homework, getting them bred right, getting them done right. And I know I have a lot of appreciation about that, about what you guys are doing with these animals as far as the breeding and production of these things goes. We sure appreciate it. Doing a really good job. Callie, again, we've got an open house. Is that right? Yep. So our open house is a Saturday, October 1st. We're going to have it from 11 to 6 and Sunday, October 2nd from 1 to 5. Mom's... Pretty excited about our menu, too, that we have. So if uh, you want to come look at cattle and be sure to stop and enjoy some food that she's going to have prepared. But I know she's going to be having some beef and uh, my Aunt Jean's famous taco salad. Actually, we have some Amish-made treats and some popcorn, too, uh, that people can enjoy while they look at the cattle. But um, if you can't make it to the open house, you know, let us know or let Rob or Becky know and schedule a visit. I really just want to thank my parents, too, actually, here. Like Mom said, our roles have, my role has changed uh, quite a bit, and, you know, I want to keep involved in the livestock industry that has done so much for me, especially the American Angus Association, and um, I'm just really thankful that Mom and Dad have been manning everything at home and making sure everything goes smoothly Why I'm here doing my number one priority, my number one job, and that's getting my DVM degree. So um, I just want to thank mom and dad for everything that they've done and, you know, helping me out and helping at home. So. Right. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. And, we'll and, get you back one day. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Don't let her kid you. Uh, she was home. I, I think it was Labor Day weekend and I was so happy that I didn't have to blow calves that day. And <laughs> I decided to help her, and I got a little talking to when we were done about my uh, blowing skills. So uh -huh. don't let her get you. She's still got her uh, foot in the door here. <laughs> right. Does does she bring a little help with her every once in a while, too? Yeah, yeah. Does he, <laughs> does he still make it up there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Now, you're you're not skipping out on these calves and running to Muncie, are you, Callie? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, no, I usually tell him to meet me up home or uh, I'll make a quick trip and see Brody, but um, he's actually going to come up to open house. I think he's excited too to see the calves because the last time he's seen them, um, it's been a while that he's been up to our house and yeah, he's excited to see uh, see the calves and uh, I'm sure they've changed a bunch since he's last seen them. So. Right. 
So I guess we, we should mention that. If if you want another opinion of these cattle, maybe you can't come see them. Uh, you know, they could call and talk to you guys. And um, Brody Fitzgerald, he's he's seen a few ones and a few good ones here and there, and, and he could tell you about these cattle as well. Yeah, he's been very helpful, uh, you know, just kind of giving us his ideas and spreading our word. So we really appreciate him, and we'll uh, – sometimes ask him to grab some clippers when he's here so <laughs> yeah. that helps as well <laughs> he, he's got a handle on that as well doesn't he yeah <laughs> yeah well that's good that's really good guys appreciate it appreciate you telling us about these cattle good luck with this set uh, what a great set you've got here for October 4th. Again, that's going to be on Angus Live, and they can just make an appointment with you guys and come see these cattle if they want to, if they're up around that area. Yeah. Yeah, if you're from the east and you're on your way to West Lafayette on the 1st, why stop in there to Laoto and check those cattle out or any other time, but that's just one of those opportunities that you might have to, to plan on. Yeah. So. Yeah. We thank you very much for helping us uh, get our word out, Andy. Well, I enjoy it yeah, very much. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy working with good people that uh, we see a lot of and uh, sure enjoy that time as well. So, guys, again, good luck. October 4th, Angus Live. We want to thank the Knott family, Callie, Rob, and Becky for joining us here on Before the Bid. And we want to thank you for listening to another Before the Bid podcast. <laughs>